Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve letter combinations of a phone number, lead code number 17. So we're given a string containing digits from two to nine inclusive, and we need to return all the possible letter combinations that the number could represent. And we can do that in any order. So basically what we have here is this old school dialing system where one doesn't have any letters, but two, if you press two, it could have been used to represent either A, B, or C. So some people think that it's like, if you press two twice, you you'd get B, press two three times, you'd get C. Not in this, it's if you press two, you could have been representing either A, B, or C, or if you press three, it could have been either D, E, or F, and so on. So the valid numbers are gonna be two to nine. Those are the only ones we care about. Okay, so basically, if you were to press two and then three, so this is a sequence of digits we did press, so we pressed two and then we pressed three, we need to return all the possible letter combinations of what it could represent. So if we pressed two, it it could have represented A, B, or C. So here, we could have started with A, so you'll see a bunch of solutions with A, or it could have been starting with B, or it could have been starting with C. So that two could have been A, B, or C, and then we pressed three. Okay, so for any of those first starting letters, A, B, or C, well, it could have been D, E, or F. So if it did start with A, it could have been representing A, D, then A, E, or A, F. If two was actually meant to be a B, then it would have been B, D, B, E, or B, F. And if it was C, then it's C, D, C, E, or C, F. Those are all the possible combinations it could have been. Now, first of all, just as a convenience factor, we're gonna create a hash map here. And so this is gonna be two could have been either A, B, or C. Notice that these are both strings here. So the string of two could have been any of these things. This way we can kind of iterate over this string and say like, was it this or was it this or was it this? So we'd have two goes to A, B, C. We would have that three could have been either D, E, or F. And I'm not gonna write the whole thing, but you get the idea. You would generate that with each of the keys as two to nine and we'll do that quite literally in the code. And I'm just gonna say, we'll call that dictionary M here. So if I use M, I'm referring to that hash map we created. Okay, so if we are given the digit string of say two, three, we'll use that same example here. Well, we'd kind of keep track of an index. So at first we're looking at the first digit and then we'd move this along to look at three later and eventually get to the end. Okay, so at the beginning, our solution starts as empty and we look at the first digit. So what is I pointing at? It is pointing at the string of two here. We would basically look at M at two. So this tells us that, okay, this is the string that's associated with that digit that it actually would return to us the string of A, B, C. Okay, so these are all the letters it could be. So we basically loop through this string here. Okay, so those are the digits it could be. So it could have been, I'll skip the quotation. So it could have been just A so far, and it could have been B so far, and it could have been C. Those are all valid possibilities. Okay, and then we would just kind of move this index over to three. Okay, so if we went down the A path here, we have three possibilities. It could have been a D. We're making that a list because we're actually going to have these as kind of a list of strings that we can join into one big string at the end here. So this is really the list of A and as well as D so that we could join that to just be a D at a base case. Okay, so we could have a D. We could also have a E and we could also have a F. Those are our three possibilities if we started with A. Okay, I think you got the idea. So I'm going to do it kind of quickly here. We would have B D as a possibility B F and we could also have B E. And finally, for the C's, we could have C and then D, we could have C and then E, or we could have C and then F here, okay? So we basically just generate this recursive tree here. Okay, let's think about the time complexity of this. Well, we get nine solutions here, which is simply just three times three. There's three possibilities at this level and another three to make nine. So if there's three possibilities here, three, 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 these ones are actually fours, and this is another three. So we'll basically say the word first of these things is a four. Basically, if there was two different steps here, we'll more generally call this n is the length of this string here. If this is n is equal to two, we're basically getting a tripling effect. So we started with three and then that multiplied by three. If we had another digit here, so if we had like maybe pressed five, for example, well, then that would again multiply it all by three. What that's telling you is we basically have a big O of three to the n solution. Or since there's actually some fours here, the worst of those 
is a four, we can actually call this a big O of four to the n solution is that at most we could basically quadruple at every single level here. We're getting a quadrupling effect and that is going to happen for every single digit that we pressed, which is now equal to n. And then the space complexity, well, this is going to take up depth in the recursion stack. So that's going to be the depth of this or the height of that. And that's just simply equal to n. You know, we're going one level each time. And so the space complexity of this is definitely going to be big O of n. So let's code this up. Okay, now firstly, we're actually just going to start this off with kind of dealing with an annoying base case here. If the length of the string is empty, then we actually have to deal with this individually. So if the digits is simply equal to the empty string, then we can actually just immediately return that exact output, which would be no strings at all. So we're going to do a recursive backtracking approach. So we need two global arrays. We'll call them answer and sol. So those are both equal to different empty arrays here. Answer is going to be the thing we actually return here, our list of strings. And solution here, this is going to be kind of dynamically all of these solutions. It's going to get bigger by appending these letters, and we're going to pop letters so that we can kind of shrink and grow here to go over all of them. And solution is actually going to be a list of characters here, okay? And we'll see why we we want to do that. Okay, now as we said, just as convenience here, we're going to make our hash map that goes from each digit to the different letters it represents. And I'm just going to copy and paste that in here because it's really not worth typing. We're going to call it letter map is a dictionary that takes the string of two. We're making it a string because when you iterate over the digits, there'll be strings. So the string of two to ABC, three is DF, and so on. Okay, now we'll write our backtracking approach. So we'll define backtrack, which takes an index index that says which digit we're currently looking at here. So we'll start at i equals zero, saying we're looking at the first digit. Now outside this function, let's actually just quickly get that n is the length of the digits here. So that's equivalently the last index of our digits. So when we hit this index, we're out of bounds. So that way we can say if our i is equal to n, that means we just went out of bounds, we have no more characters. And so we want to say we have one more solution, we hit a base case. So we want to answer dot append the empty string dot join of solution. Okay, so solution is going to be a list of characters or a list of strings, we'll see that shortly. And we're basically just combining all of the letters together to say that we now have like one of these strings here. So we have a solution, we'll add that solution to our list of those. And then we'll just return because we're at a base case. Okay, otherwise, we're not at a base case. And so we have like a current digit here, we're looking at digits at i. And so we could use the letter map here to say, okay, well, digits at i, well, that is going to tell us say, if it's a two, that we want to iterate over a, b or c, because that digit could have been representing any of those letters, we want to account for all of them. So for each letter in the letter map at the digits at i, okay, so digits at i is just kind of the digit we're currently looking at, it's one of these two. And so letter map at digits at i, that is going to look up the key here. So say, for example, it was a two, well, then it's going to give us this. So it's going to give us the string of ABC, the possible letters that digit represented, we're going to iterate over for each letter in those different ones. So one at a time here, we're going to say, okay, well, solution dot append the letter. So we'll say, okay, we're using that letter now. And we want to backtrack on i plus one. So we are going to use that letter and then actually call our function again, progressing forward and using the fact that we use the letter. When we get back from here, we want to solution dot pop, which is going to allow us to undo the fact that we made that decision. So for each of the letters, we want to say, okay, let's use that letter, let's carry forward and deal with the repercussions of that. And we'll hit a base case at some point. And then after we're back from this path here, we need to undo the fact that we made that decision and pop it off. Okay, so that's going to pop off that same letter that we used there. And then from here, we can kind of just have like an implicit return here, we're just going to return from that. That. Okay, so that's our function. And we're going to just call backtrack on the first index here. So we call backtrack on zero, that is going to go and get all of the different possibilities, we'll hit all of our base cases, and in answer, add those to our list of solutions. And we can actually just return answer from here. So if we are to run this, this is going to work. 
Now, as we said here, the time complexity of this is going to be roughly big O of four to the N. Now it's actually a little bit worse than that if you wanna really get technical because kind of at all of those four to the N solutions, we actually do have to join up each of the solutions and a solution is gonna be, well, basically the length of the digits. And so you could actually have kind of another N here. You could say this is big O of N times four to the N. Uh, at this point, the N doesn't really make that much of a difference because it's already brutally slow. Uh, but for an interview, it could be nice to write that it's that. That's a little more technical. And the space complexity, that is definitely just big O of N. The recursion call stack is definitely going to be just depth N. And so that's going to take up N depth space. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.